Shalom, everyone. This is Dr. James A. Durr. All praises to the Most High Yahuwah. He who breathes life, behold the nail hands. His son Yahusha, Hamashiach, Yahuwah is salvation. The Ruach Hakadesh, the set apart spirit, the comforter, the one who leads us into all truth. Praying that all is well with you and your family. Praying you will be obedient and continue to accomplish all that the Most High has assigned to you. Today, this lesson is a very, very important lesson. All lessons that I teach, I preach are very important. But I believe this lesson is important because of who I'm referencing this lesson to. This lesson is, lesson is referenced to the Hebrew men. Hebrew is like men. To encourage you, brothers, to not give up, to encourage you to not give in, to not throw in the towel because... Yes, we as Hebrew men have it hard. We are the most people that are penalized for just who we are in skin. Who we are as Yah's people. We're thrown in jail. We can't get real good jobs. We get out of jail, we can't get a job because of our records. People always scrutinize us every time something happened in the land. You see all on television. If somebody get robbed or killed, the first thing you want to do is blame the black man. And so we have had a bad rap. And a lot of it stems from our ancestors not obeying Yah in accordance to his word. And so what I want to do today is encourage every Hebrew, Israelite man, Negro man worldwide. Yes, if you want to be encouraged. Uh, foreigners, you get encouraged with this word too. Heathens, get in, uh, you get delivered in Yah and come to Yah and follow his Torah. You can be delivered and set free too. And you can start following this Torah. But I'm, today I'm talking to the Hebrew Israelite men, the Avri Yasharel men. I want you to know that Yah loves you. He's concerned about you. He knows the warfare that we are up against. But if we fight together, we stick with each other. And pray and let Yah fight our battles. He did it for uh, uh, Jehoshaphat when he called Judah. They didn't have to fight their battles. Yah will fight your battle. All that you need to do is pray, call out to Yah, and tell Yah where you are, that you're sorry for everything you've done wrong. Let Yah know that you de we deserve the punishment that we received because of our ancestors and that he is just in his dealings. You begin to tell Yah, Yah, I want to make it right with you, get it lined up with you, and I want to seek your face while you may be found and call upon you while you're yet near, and Yah will adhere to you. A broken heart and a contrite spirit, he will not despise. I'm going to read to you some scriptures that I want to uh, make this statement here. In here. I want to read this. And... I hope I say our Aunt Chote's name right, our, our sister, her name right, because she wrote a very powerful uh, statement concerning us as men. This is a concerned Hebrew Israelite sister. She wrote this back June 30. Uh, I want to say her name, Lathia Laya Shadaya. She wrote this very powerful piece. It wasn't long, but then she put down a meme to go with it and it broke it down. She said, this is what mainstream America wants our black men to make a choice from. Shaking my head. Don't use any of these, any of these. Choose to be set apart. She said, choose to be set apart. Don't use none of these things that these people have set up out there for us to walk in. Now listen, the Bible said in Deuteronomy 28 and 37, look what it says, Then I'm going to go back to what she said, and you shall become an astonishment. It's not just the men, but the women and the children too. A proverb and a byword among all nations, whether Yahuwah shall lead you. That means we're scattered all over the four corners of the earth. We are, we are an astonishment. A proverb and a byword. Byword means they call us all type of names. I'm going to show you some of these names in a few minutes. They call us the word nigger. They call us a, a coon. They call us apes. They call us monkeys. They call us all type of names. And we are still using those names. Matter of fact, we use, it's a matter of fact, we use the name nigger as a term of endearment 
which that name shouldn't be utilized amongst us at all. That name should be appalled. We should hate that name. Because when you look back at the history of that name, that name only brought us sorrow and pain. And it's still being utilized today. You know what's so deep? Even though people are thinking that things are going to change, it's not going to change. It's going to get worse. And y'all will place people in position to show you that things are not going to get better. Because we're at the end of our captivity and it's going to get tough. He's going to get us out of here, but it's going to get tough because people that you see in place in these high positions, they really hate you. They despise you. Look at how they're treating our men. Our men are number one when it comes down to being in jail. They moved, they broke, made sure they broke the families up. They strategically did it. And when you put our men in jail with them having sexual drives, guess what's going to happen? They're going to want sex, and that sex is going to sex is going to go towards another man. That's how our men come up, get out of prison, end up messed up in the head. They didn't go in homosexuals, they went in men. But with that sex drive, they're drawn to have sex, the enemy begin to work on them and tell them that it's okay to do this. And then they made it legal in the land. You know that was a devil's hand doing that to, 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 to blur out the lines of the genders. But they got our men coming out all messed up and twisted up, sagging in the pants. That's a sign in prison that you want to have sex with other men and that you're available for other men. The sagging of the pants is not a good thing. It's a satanic thing. Hallelujah. So we are in a place right now where we, as y'all's people, need to start building each other up. When you look at the word sagging, when you reverse it around, uh, uh, and the word sagging, you turn it around backwards, guess what you get? Niggas. Sagging, reverse it to the other way, niggas. Like the word, if you use the word Santa, when we deal with uh, uh, Christmas, Santa, if you change around a few letters, you got Satan. But I want to deal with us, sagging niggas. You don't think that stuff was planned out? You don't think the enemy is out there to destroy us? He came to kill, steal, and to destroy the people of Yah. Who did Yahushua come to to save? He came to seek and save that was lost. He was after the whole house of Yahshua, Israel. Us, his chosen people. But let me finish the rest of the scripture. The Bible said in uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 37, and you shall be called, come in astonishment, not just the men, but it's women too, but I'm only dealing with the men today, a proverb and a byword among all nations, whether Yahuwah shall lead you. That's dealing with all of our people. But I'm talking about our men, how we became a byword, and they gave us all these other bywords that will point towards our men. Why do you think they're trying to destroy the men? Leave our women alone. Our women will start looking towards other nations, uh, men of other nations, Gentiles, to marry them, to cohabitate with them. Why? Because our men are not there. Our men beat so down so bad, beat down so bad that uh, it, it made us it, uh, such a docile type person that We'll start looking at each other as enemies when we're not each other's enemy because of the brainwashing that was done to us while in slavery. You know what's so sad? We're still in slavery today. It's not slavery as we call slavery as usual, but it's still slavery. And you still feel it. Listen at this. Let me finish up with the, uh, our sister said. Our sister Shadaya said. This is what mainstream America wants our black men to uh, men to make a choice from. Shaking my head. Don't use any of these choices to be uh, to be uh, in of in of these. Choose to be set apart. Choose to be better than. Choose to be the man the Most High created you to be. A leader and not a follower. What I'm going to do? I'm going to read the Book of Psalms. And listen, y'all. Anybody can receive these scriptures that I'm about to read. Hear me, I'm not making the scriptures or uh, changing the, the meaning of any of these scriptures. I'm just here to encourage our men today. 
Women, these words that I'm about to read, they're for you too. They're for your children. They're for your children's children. Hear me. Any one of us can receive these words. Are you hearing me? I'm just saying to you today, the men, our Hebrew men, be encouraged. Continue to stand. Y'all's going to bring you up. You're, you get, you're going to get your strength back. Hallelujah. I know he can do it. We don't have a lot of people encouraging us. Every time we do anything, no matter if you're rich, poor, middle class, you're still in the eyesight of most of these people, nothing but a nigger. Upper class nigger, lower class nigger, middle class nigger. That's how they see us. It don't matter. I'm not calling you that, but I'm saying that's how they're looking at us. That's not a good name. But I see you as blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed everywhere you go. Yeah, we are still up under our captivity. But if you repent to Yah, Yah can uh, bless you and give you strength to stand and call upon his name. And he can deliver you from any restraint, any curses. The most I can do it. Yes, we still be in the land of our captivity, but Yah will bless you because you are obedient to him. Now I'm going to read to you Psalms 139. This is what Yah is thinking about you. I'm going to read verses 1 through 18. And then I'm going to read some of the lists that the young, uh, our young uh, uh, Hebrew sister said we shouldn't even adhere to these lists. List. I'm going to read what Yah said about you first. First verse, O Yahuwah, you have searched me and know me. You know my down sitting and my uprising. You understand my thoughts are far off. You can pass, you can compass my path and my line down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Yahuwah, you know it all together. You have beset me behind and before and laid your hands upon me. Verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot obtain it. Whether shall I go from your rock or whether shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. Sheol means the grave or hell. If I uh, take the wings of the morning, the night verse, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me and your right hand shall hold me. That's the 10th verse. The 11th verse. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light ab ab about me. 12th verse. Yea, the darkness hides not from you. But the night shines as the day, the darkness and the light are both alike to you. Now let's get down to the 13th verse and go on to the 14th verse. For you have possessed my mind. Hallelujah. You have covered me in my mother's womb. 14th verse, I will praise you for I am, this is you uh, Hebrew men, yes Hebrew women, Hebrew children, the family of Yasharel, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows right well. Fifteen, my substance was not hid from you when I was made in secret and curiously wroth in the lower parts of the earth. Your eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect and in your sefer, your book, all my members were written, with the countenance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. He said, before anything was made about me, you wrote them in a book, because you knew how you was going to make me. Seventeen. How precious also are your thoughts unto me, O L. How great is the sum of them. The Bible said in the book of Jeremiah 29, it said, I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. I hate some of the stuff we're going through as men. I hate what we have to face as a people. I hate what we have to face. But men, I come to tell you that Yah loves you. He, he, will, he will help you if you surrender to him. Give your whore your heart. Give him your mind. Give him your soul. Serve the Most High Yah. With everything you got, present your body as a living sacrifice. The 17th verse again. How precious also are your thoughts unto me, O El. How great is the sum of them. 18th verse. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I wake, I am still with you. Remember how uh, uh, Jeremiah, when he was talking to Yah, when Yah said, I chose you to go speak to my people. Jeremiah said, I can't do it. I'm only a child. But the word of Yah came to him saying, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and I ordained your prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Adonai Yahuwah, 
Behold, I cannot speak, for I'm a child. That's what he said to Yah. I'm just a child. How are you going to use me? But Yah said unto him, Say not, I'm a child, for you shall go to all that I shall send you, and from beginning to the end, whatsoever I command you, you shall speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, said Yahuwah. And he put forth his hand, Yahuwah did, and touched Jeremiah's mouth. And Yahuwah said unto me, Jeremiah, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Now hear me, hear me. He was speaking to Jeremiah. Jeremiah didn't see anything uh, uh, good within himself. But he told Jeremiah, before you was in your mother's womb, I formed you. I ordain you to be a prophet to the nation. Many of our men don't know who they are. Yes, many of our women and children are the same. But as I stated earlier, I'm talking to the men. Hear me. This is to the men. This is what the young, uh, young Hebrew sister wrote to the men. Be encouraged. She's trying to encourage the men. Our men, women, encourage our men. Pray for our Hebrew men, our unks. Pray for our uh, unkies. Pray for them. They need it. They're in a hard struggle. They're in a hard place. They need prayer. I'm not neglecting everyone else. That's not what I'm saying. Please don't turn and twist what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. Give me this opportunity just to encourage our men. They are fearfully and wonderfully made. They're made in the image and the likeness of Yah. But the devil, the enemy don't want them to know that. They are the chosen seed. They are the hand-picked seed of Yah. Hallelujah. They are from the tribe of uh, Israel. The tribes of Israel. We are his people. A chosen generation. A royal priesthood. To be called out of darkness into his marvelous light. These are some of the words our sister was talking about. She said, that this is a, the choices they give us of assigned roles in white society. Now I know people don't want to hear that. They think you're prejudiced because you're standing up for who you are. You finally get getting the identity, your identity of who you are. You, you're finally seeing that some of us still don't have it. Some of us still think it's a, a, a bunch of a, 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 just a, a farce. It's, it's not real. But let me tell you right now, you have an identity. You are your chosen people. And in white society, hear me, you're not looked at too well. But I come to encourage you. I come to build you up. And I want to say that she said, don't receive these things, these labels. Don't accept them. I never forget a guy today telling me, he said, I've seen this guy. I haven't seen him in a while. I said, man, I haven't seen you in years. Uh, how you doing? He was with another young gentleman. He said, uh, well, uh, do I know you? I said, yeah, you know me. I said, we should live next door. He said, when you get my age, you tend to forget. He was only one year older than me. I said, well, uh, I, I'm not going to. He said, when you get to my age, you'll, you'll be doing the same thing. I said, no, I won't. I said, I'm still going to have a good mind. You know what I don't do? I don't let people speak over me what they want to speak over me and say what they want to say because the world is saying that. I want to talk about that. Uh, uh, one of my lessons I'm going to teach about the tongue. Be careful what you speak over yourself. The Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Stop calling yourself all these stupid names, all these satanic names. Somebody asked me, who are you? I'm the righteousness of Yah. I'm blessed of Yah. I'm the Kodesh of Yah. I'm Yah's uh, vessel. I'm Yah's servant. We're the people of the book. Now, these are some of the things she wrote down. She said, don't receive these positions. She said, a man. In parentheses, she said, sorry, this position is unavailable because they don't want, to see you, want you to see yourself as a what? Man. Are you hearing me? Now, you know, we as Hebrew Israelites, we grow our beards. And somebody made a powerful point. And I'm going to check into it a little bit more. How that when we came over on the ships, they made us shave our faces. It's easy, somebody said, that when you got a beard, it's hard to call somebody a boy when they have a beard. Because you see nothing but man because you see a beard. But when you clean face shave them, I can see it's easier, it'd be easier to call someone a boy because of the shaved face. Somebody just made that reference point. So I'm going to check into that and, and, and dig into it a little bit more. I just wanted to bring that out. So, but y'all wanted us to have our beards. Now, listen at this. The, the, the word man has sorry disposition is unavailable in parentheses because the world don't want you to know that you're a man. But look at the things, the, the assignment Assign roles that they want to give us our choices. A boy, 
a gangster, a pimp. Uh, now it says a the B word, a B word. Parentheses, they got a word, a faggot. A man acting like a woman. A, a deadbeat dad. An Uncle Tom. A token. A criminal. A thug. A crackhead, a bomb, a drunk. A drug dealer. A lover boy, a player. A sellout, a thief. A good nigga, law abiding citizens. This is what they wrote down. A school dropout, a failure, a janitor, a busboy, and a statistic. Choose from that list. Now you think about that. That's the list they have given us as a people, as a as men to walk in. They want you to go from sister to sister having babies. Spreading your seed is just like on the plantation. Making babies, not taking care of babies. Just making babies, not taking care of babies. They want you to do that. They want you to be away from your children. They don't want you to talk to your children. They want you to be a good dad. And we're some of the best people in the world. Best When it comes down to men, we're some of the best dads on the planet. Black men. Hebrew men. Aubrey men. We are some of the best when it comes down to taking care of children when we get in that position. We're the best husbands. We're the best in everything we do. When we put our mind to it. So this is what the mainstream wants you to adhere to. But I say we're not going to adhere to that. We are Yah's chosen. We are men. We are righteous men in Yahuwah. We are chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A peculiar people. Prophets. We are Yah's prophets. We are Yah's teachers. We are Yah's preachers. We are Yah's elders. Are you hearing me? We are somebody in the Most High Yahuwah. We are chosen. Hallelujah. We are y'all's warriors. We are vessels of honor. That's who we are as Hebrew men. Hebrew Israelite men. The Avri Yasharel. That's who we are. We are his people. And we're going to walk in such a manner that when they see us coming, they're going to see nothing but the glory and the anointing of Yah. Wake up, Hebrew men. Be encouraged. Know that I'm praying for you. Keep praying for me. Let's pray for one another and do what we're assigned to do. And let's live the set-apart life. Not the life that we want to lead, but the set-apart life according to the laws and the commandments and the precepts and the ordinances of Yah. Hallelujah. So please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Push the like button. Hit the notification bell to be alerted concerning new lessons. Share this lesson with everyone you meet. Shalom.